to Money Making Sense. I am live in Park City for the Sundance Film Festival and we are at the Music Lodge. Joining me today is President Anote and Mathieu, you are director for the film that I just forgot the name of. So you're going to tell me the name of your film. Anote's Arc. Anote's Arc. Arc. Okay. So an Anote's Arc is an island that is sinking, or I don't know if it's necessarily sinking, but the, the sea level is rising, and so your island is disappearing. How long has that been happening? Uh, let me be factually correct, if you if yes, I might. Yes, please do. Uh, the, uh, our islands are very low lying, on average about two meters above sea level. The projected rise in sea levels uh, by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change indicates that our islands will be submerged well within the century. Well, well within this century. So less than a hundred years, your island will not... Yeah, but I think the point is, uh, well before that, will they continue to remain habitable or not? And I, I suggest not. Okay. So how many people live on the island? Uh, it's islands, and it's I about live. over 100,000 people scattered over maybe about 20 islands. So with, if your homes are disappearing, you don't have any land to have a home on, where is everybody going? Well, that is the question that uh, I have been asking the international community, how do we deal with this? It's not something that we can deal with on our own. It's something that, I mean, climate change is a global responsibility. Yes. Uh, and so the solution must be global and it's got to be a collective uh, uh, partnership to try to address this. So I know some people are, are applying for visas or uh, citizenship in other countries, maybe New Zealand, Australia. How does that work? How do people decide, okay, I'm going to leave the life I've always had and go somewhere else? Well, what you will find is um, most of those people are the educated, qualified, and people who have the capacity to, uh, to, to relocate. But I think we're talking about the larger population not having the capacity to do that and so that is the challenge and this is what I've always uh, rejected the notion that our people should become climate refugees and if they if they relocate you know, due to climate induced displacement and uh, without having had the preparation then they will become refugees so what is the national product of, of your islands we, we have a huge uh, fishery resource our biggest revenue is from the, the sale of uh, fish licenses to foreign fishing fleet. And so this is where we derive uh, much of our revenue. The other industry is really basic, it's highly subsidized, which is the copra industry. Okay, so the people who work in those industries now, how easy or hard is it if they did go somewhere else, how would they be able to support themselves? They would, have, they would not have the skills. They would not have the uh, language uh, the ability to interact in, uh, with in English or whatever kind of language they need to, and uh, their ability to adapt to the new environment is going to be very limited. Is is your islands part of the Commonwealth? Because I know, like Australia, New Zealand, they're all part of that English Commonwealth. Are you part of the Commonwealth? We were a former British colony. Yes. So, is Britain offering any type of assist? I mean, how? I'm just trying to wrap my head around. If you lose your house, does somebody give you sixty thousand dollars to go? Okay, go move somebody else here some money. I mean, what happens when? We haven't seen any of that happening yet, and I think this is the purpose of uh, what the advocacy. And this is where the film has come very, it's been, the film is a very powerful tool in this process. Right. And uh, so hopefully it will add to the momentum of the advocacy that has been going on, which I've been undertaking. So Matthew, you directed this documentary about just following the rise of sea level and the disappearance of, of these islands. So what is it that you are, that you have tracked in your documentary? I would say I've been following human beings more than uh, the islands themselves. Uh, I've been shadowing uh, President Tong for three years and a woman also called Samary who moved to New Zealand. So it's really character driven. I wanted to touch the heart of people by, for them to understand the real life of, of its people. So it's not a uh, a scientific movie where you have like talking head and scientific speaking about climate change is really the real life of you know the real struggle of uh, President Tong and and a woman that has to move to New Zealand with the whole family. 
And how long did you follow these people? It's a altogether a four-year process. Oh wow. Okay. And how long have you seen the water rising on the? How long has I mean, this been over the last five years, fifty years? I mean, when did this start? When did you first re realize? Okay. My island is going away. Okay. Let, let me be quite clear. The, the rise in sea level is very marginal. This maybe it's like the growth of your hair. Maybe even slower than that. But I think what is uh, new is the, the science and the information coming forward. Uh, these events maybe we have been experiencing over the decades, but we did not know why, how, why, why they were happening. What the science is telling us is it's happening, it's going to get worse, and it's not being reversed. And so having that knowledge, I think we have, we try to get the common sense to analyze what it means. Yeah. for the future of our people. I think I want to be very clear that it's uh, it's not about me in my generation, but it's about the next generation, my children, and certainly my grandchildren. And this is what I'm talking about because even in my own country, we have people who deny it because they look at it from their perspective. Will it affect their lives? And the, the truth is, no, it will not. It may not to a, a very substantial degree, but it will affect it. Well, maybe not 100% of the population, but a certain percentage of the population, and this will increase over time. And how big of a setback was it for President Donald Trump to pull out of the, the climate change agreement? It was highly demoralizing because, um, personally, in my own advocacy, I'd always been trying to get the U.S. on board because it was necessary for two real good reasons. One, the U.S. is one of the biggest emitters, the second largest emitter, and secondly, that uh, the U.S. has the capacity to deal with this. And it, uh, whether the U.S. likes it or not, they do have leadership of, this, uh, of the, the global community. Yeah. And so having uh, the, the, uh, the threat of withdrawal by the, the, the new administration was highly demoralizing initially. But since then, we've had some very firm commitments by uh, different states, uh, different NGOs, uh, um, industry leaders within the United States, and so that is encouraging. And so maybe we can go ahead without the endorsement of the current administration, and I make that distinction. I think the, there may be a quite a di distinction between the attitude of the administration and the different administrations within the different states, the different industries within the United States. And so maybe there is hope that not 100% of the United States has withdrawn. If the world right now, every the United States, China, India, were some of the biggest polluters of the planet, if we all stopped putting out emissions effective today, would that change the future of your island, or is it too late? Like, it's, it's too late. It's too late. The, um, the science is quite clear. No matter if we achieve zero emission levels tomorrow, the momentum of what's already in the atmosphere will continue to drive global temperatures up. It will continue to drive the, the rise in sea level. So we really have to look at alternatives. It's not about cutting back on emissions. It's about trying to survive what is coming. We know it's coming. And it's about finding ways to address that. Building our climate resilience, maybe that in combination with relocation, I don't know. But we have to accept the brutal reality that unless we undertake extremely radical and very significant adaptation measures, we will be underway. So if everyone has to relocate off the island, how does your society, your, your past, how does that survive going forward? I think you know the answer to that question as much as I do, because uh, we haven't done it yet. But I think we've had pockets of communities, our communities, who have been relocated to other countries in the past, and what happens inevitably is they get absorbed into the environment. Uh, no doubt there will be elements of our culture and tradition within the people, but over time it will be, uh, it won't be as strong as it would have been if it had remained isolated and uh, practiced on a daily basis. And Matthew, what do you hope people get from the documentary? What do you hope they glean from it after walking out? I mean, I think, uh, I think the, the documentary premiere at Sundance is a very good uh, you know, launch pad for the story. And um, I mean, Kiribati is still a country that most of the people they don't even don't know where the country. When I'm speaking pe with people around, and they're like, "Where's Kiribati?" So I think it's a, a first thing is like for people to realize that they exist. And I think uh, that's the first, as uh, a first, first first thing, you know, like, yeah. you know, 
putting awareness like this is, this is this country and this people like existing somewhere in the Pacific and then I think it's uh, by, by having those very personal stories and touching the heart of people I think what I, I believe I can achieve is, is making a new universal story because what's happened with Samari when she having you know all the struggling she's going through is a is, she didn't I mean her story is a universal story so I want to connect people to the, any people in the planet to those people in Kiribati say oh we all connected somehow to the, that issue and do you consider this your island sort of the canary in the mine meaning where your island is going others will be following there is no question about that unless this is why it's important I, I, <clears throat> I have been asked so if the, if, it, if um, cutting emissions has no impact on your future why do you continue to participate in the process and the answer is precisely that because others will follow and uh, the whole planet will follow unless some remedial measures are taken to ensure that we change the pattern of and the trend of events that are ongoing at the moment. Okay. Any, any last words? Do you have anything, any projects coming up or any other, I mean, what else are you doing to try to get the word out aside from the, the documentary? Well, the, the film would have done a wonderful job doing that, but I think it's, uh, it's not just getting the message out, it's about people absorbing the message and acting on it. And so the challenge that I've always posed to people is, uh, what are you going to do about it? You know, after all, it's not us that has destroyed our rooms. Okay? And it's like somebody coming and who has dropped the tree on your home by cutting the tree next door, and he damaged your home, dropped the tree on your home, and he says, comes to you, what are you going to do about it? I think my question is, what are you going to do about it having destroyed my home? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> President Anote and Matthew, I didn't get your last name. My Ritz. Ritz? Yes. Okay. Uh, and with Money Making Sense, thank you for tuning in and please catch the movie. Thanks for being a Money Making Sense listener. Follow your common sense on the social media, Money Making Sense, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.